the celestial entity originated in a realm beyond physical existence. Beyond the astral worlds of Anwen through which Tori had ventured on occasion, and beyond the mental realms of existence through which Tori had yet to pass in a conscious state. This entity called the causal level of awareness home. From this celestial plane, his kind resided over the highest mental realms of human soul-mind activity, a level of consciousness known as Devachan. He described Devachan as the happy place, where human souls resided in between their first incarnations. Here, the effect of a human soul mind's admirable earthly aspirations finally found their cause and were realized to perfection. The being had said he was of an order of Devanic entity known as the Dian Chohans, the builders of consciousness. Able to function on many different planes of existence at once, Dian Chohans were of the highest order of Devas. The fairy folk of the other world made up the lower orders of devas. The Anchohans perceive the will of the divine and then aid the planetary spirits to implement change in creation. The deva had activated his rupa body, rupa meaning having form, to appear to Tori in the physical realm. This was not a solid physical body, however. It was a gigantic but vague astral form resembling one of the deva's human charges which she had recognized as her husband, Maelgwen. On the mental plane of awareness, the deva took the form of numerous ethereal cocoons where its human charges resided between physical incarnations, living out unrealized dreams in preparation for the next physical life. On the causal level of awareness, the deva's home, he employed a formless or arupa body which bound him to the host of the Dian Chohans. On this level of awareness, the higher souls of humankind would reunite with the divine and begin their apprenticeship in one of the many divanic races, in the hope of one day graduating to become a planetary logos, or guardian. Her heart seemed to be exploding with love and happiness. Tori could literally feel these energies flowing forth from some hidden inner universe within her heart center. This pure life force strengthened every particle of her being and then continued to flow out of her and into the clearing beyond. It seemed that her own aura was expanding and as it did, it empowered everything it engulfed. So abundant was the divine energy that emanated from her, Tori felt she could have filled the planet the star system, even the galaxy with it. She had never felt more invincible in her life. Remember this feeling, Tori Alexander, and draw upon it when you feel tempted to question your lot. You of all beings have no need to fear, and certainly no need to seek out one of my kind. For you have a direct link with Akasha, the full memory of allied Logoi. The Tablet of Destinies. Tori began to fondle the small three-sided pyramid that hung on a chain about her neck. This was made of the pinkish metal known as Orichalum, the strongest substance known to the ancient civilizations on Gaia. Taliesin, High Merlin of Britain, had given Tori the ancient divining tool before he descended back towards the Logos to assume his place in the higher scheme of things. As all had been so peaceful since setting foot on Kyla fifty years ago, Tori had been given no reason to consult the sacred tool. All people have the divine guidance of their Logos, but only you have access to the central sun of the allied chain Logoi. The central sun? Tori wondered out loud, and she was instantly blinded by a vision of a large, whirling vortex in space. The galaxy, she clarified, whereupon she was overawed by her realization. I have access to the Akashic records of the entire physical galaxy. The Deva nodded surely. And all that has, is, and will take place therein. <laughs>